sort of a little bed in the back to transport stuff. Because stuff is, is the, like, we usually, we, if we were just going ourselves, we can just walk. But if we're carrying, like, soil bags or hay or even vet or anything like that, so a little area to carry stuff would be a good one. Um, the other thing is it would be great if it was useful year-round, even in the Midwest where it gets pretty cold. So uh, uh, if it had like a, a cab that could be enclosed with even just canvas or plastic in the winter, and we talked about this much, and you said that we could even have heat, right? Yeah. A little fan blowing heat into the cab. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think a couple of the things that come to mind right now Thing. Yeah, okay. And we didn't say that. Uh, so another thing we're working on is getting students involved in schools. So this would be an excellent competition project. Right. That's, that's another thing. Um, as a solar utility vehicle, because you can easily do this. You can turn this into solar, put a bunch of panels on a roof, and it, it could be practical with solar only. That would be awesome. Now, I just got an idea about the heat. So for this version, we were talking about the set a last meeting we were talking about the separate power cube the power cube that has a separate engine and a separate hydraulic slash cooling part well why don't we take that cooling part with the fan and make that the cab heater so if you have those two things separate that makes it easier for the heater part so maybe we could think about that how that could be done because typically the power cube has got the uh, hydraulic reservoir and the engine next to each other but if we make those two modules uh, it doesn't matter where we put one the hot fluid module which in the winter could be a heater right it's just like the heating in your car it works by a heat exchanger from the fluid radiator fluid uh, here we'd have this this hydraulic thing with a fan on it that could be blown hot air inside the cab so something like that so heat can be the hydraulic cooler part hey what do you think of that Okay, can you hear me okay? Yeah. I, I, I was thinking that same thing, the heat, that does sound like it, there's possible ways to, yeah, reutilize that. And um, as I was said in the text, um, a, a simple hitch on the back or a pin or some way to attach a small wagon or something, I'm sure would be okay. uh, easy to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely easy. Hitch on the back. Okay. Um, ball hitch. Or a pen. Okay, so let's outline all the parts. So everybody, that document is editable. Why don't you y'all go in there? So if you go to the link in the, in the chat box, and we've got Nathan, Jen, Abe, Katerina, Katie, myself. Okay. Um, so go to the document in the chat box. Let's talk about, so let's just start getting right down to it. Uh, first, let's list all the parts. And on the wiki page, the part library is seeded. So as soon as we have files, we upload them to the part library. So first we're going to get together on, okay, what are all the parts here? So, so make a copy of those bubbles and start putting things in. So motors, um, motor mounting plate. Start listing components. If you want it in there, put it in there. We'll draw it up. And the idea is it's modular, so we can we can or cannot include things as needed. So people, yeah, go ahead, uh, start making copies of this stuff and and uh, adding items. That's collaborative development. Now what you're seeing here is OSC's somewhat pathetic way to do cloud collaborative development. I mean, we've been at it for some time. We're developing, like what you see is somewhat of a prototype process of how we can work together, but the, we're working towards the fact like the, the key thing is people, the number of people that show up and how many of those people know the basic collaborative literacy on a development process and free cat. But imagine if we work with schools, get hundreds of people that know the process. So right now I'm thinking that the, the idea of collaborating with schools is a big one and I'm actually quite excited about it because if you look at our graph graph of developer numbers we're kind of plateauing like we're going up like yearly cycles of 
higher development in summer, shutting down for the winter, up and down, but it's not growing exponentially or growing. Uh, yeah, it's kind of going, but I, I'd like to see that graph of developer numbers way up. And through design sprints, through the real co-optitions, through design sprints like this. So that's a little, little advertisement for this with incentive challenges. Because one of the things that are an issue for the project, I think, are retention. No kidding. Um, there's very few people that stick with the project for years upon years. Uh, there's only a handful, whereas many people just kind of come and go. So it's important to keep the interest up and so forth. Okay. But with my book coming up, yeah, I think it's going to take me like a couple of years to write this book. But uh, with that, it's going to be like the grand push forward, the seminal text on this. Okay. Um, let's go. What else is there? Seat, frame. What about that solar panel on top? We're going to have a solar panel as a cover. So, so I would say... Um, I would say we put a solar panel on top because though we found that those power cube engines don't have a lot of charging power. Uh, solar. What else? We're gonna sit on something. We're gonna do. We're gonna have valves. Uh, valves. Uh, and these are gonna be what kind of valve? I would say they're gonna be. A cylinder valve. Um, why? Because you want this thing to stop when you let off the the, the speed. Like you don't want to park on a hill and keep rolling down the hill, which is what you'll do if you don't have cylinder valves. Because motor valves they spin freely. Um, that's insights on the hydraulics. Okay, it's two frames. Uh, where's that hitch? Hitch. Roll cage. Roll cage is going to be the frame. Because um, we're going to do, let's do a power cube like frame. It's a thing that encloses the whole thing. Frame as roll cage. As roll over protection. A cab cover. Um, two cylinder valves. What else? We got. Tires. Now the like the hubs for the tires. Hubs. Um, what else we got? Well, there's. Where's the power cube? Okay, power cube goes on it. Um, power cube motor unit. I'm going to break it into two. cube uh, hydraulic unit or heater unit let's call it cooling unit it's called hydraulic cooling unit um, yeah we can actually for the Part library, we can put in like the whole power cube library in there just to make it all in one place. And therefore, if we have all these parts here, you can modify this to make your own, uh, make your own different versions of this golf cart. Because there's different versions of golf carts. You can make one that's like long, like 10. We've, we've seen that there's, they go from anywhere like 7 to like 12 feet or something like that. Bed, uh huh. Wow, that's so many parts. Um, cooling.
cooling unit, motor unit. Frame's gonna have a hitch on it, which I erased. Hitch. Cab frame. Cab cover. So is cab cover like winter cover? Recording has stopped. Oh, my recording has stopped. Um. I'm still capturing recording on the, my desktop here. Uh, let's see, let's maybe uh, restart. Okay, I'm, I'm back. I don't know what happened there. Um, I'll share my screen again. Oh, we had stopped recording as yeah. well. It says on my, it hasn't started again. Okay, I'm recording on my desktop here, so hopefully that's it. Might be any decent. Um, okay. I'm recording as well. Excellent. And my audio recording for the last meeting uh, was was good actually. So. I actually just to note I, I uh, uploaded a copy of that and I linked it on uh, your recording of the meeting margin. Nice. The previous one. Okay. So cab so frame is the same as cab frame. Winter cover is gonna be a scumbag for the winter. Solar panel. Um, that's clear. Pitch. What else goes on a frame? Are we gonna? Yeah, basic version one. Uh, valves. We're gonna have to have mounts for the valves. Valve mounts. Um, we're gonna mount those with bolts. So, so bolts for valve mounts. Uh, controls electrical diagram right left throttles okay for controls we okay electro diagram that's a thing that comes out but it's a um, starter switch for the controls uh, so there's gonna be a starter switch which is gonna be connected to the engine which is gonna have engine start both like pull Pull start and electronic, electric start. Right left throttle is the valves. Um, what's the two cylinder valves? Got it. I had a question about that when you disconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, hoses. If you have cylinders, you have hoses for the fluid. So some hoses, which are outside of the power cube hosing. So hoses. There's a bad um, pitch battery. Battery's gonna go probably in uh, so this would be the engine cube. Battery would go. Yeah, we're but the battery, I, I think, yeah, I think that there's probably room enough in the engine cube somewhere to fit in there, depending on what size it is. Yeah. But I was starting to think about the redesign on the power cubes, because that's important, and I was thinking of redrawing it uh, pretty quick, easily, I think. But I, I, I kind of wonder which way, you know, depending on the design of this, that there's all kinds of possibilities for mounting and, and reworking the separate hydraulic and, and engine power cubes because the hydraulic unit 
would be mostly a tank with connections and uh, uh, maybe some cooling built in. So it, it could be oriented either more vertically or a bit more horizontally uh, in the golf cart if there's a need for different space. So I, Recording I, is on. I wonder what the – there's different possible orientations, I guess, for designing that. Uh -huh. Of course, it doesn't mean that the frame of the cube necessarily has to be that different, but you might end up welding in the ports in different places or something like that. Yeah. We have to look at the geometry, how it lines up in this particular use case. Maybe use this use case as a way to do this. Um, so maybe when we talk about the hydraulic cooling unit, um, the way we design that, we should probably do like multiple outlets for so you can run another engine off of that if you have other applications. So maybe do like two, two outlet hydraulic cube. Yeah. Yeah. A couple. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Power cube, two hydraulic cooling unit. Because we did last, we did was we like four. Um, but since I'm going to well, be building that, let's do You this said. Hmm. Let's see, you said you want to put four wheel drive on this. Probably is that is that a version one thing? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, four. All four. Yeah, definitely, because for traction, I mean, you're going to be really limited if you don't have more than um, traction that can do more than perfectly trimmed lawns on a golf course, which yeah. doesn't happen to be the state of fact of uh, the farm today. Okay, but I guess it could be um, just two, let's see, two controls. You just steer yeah, the left and right. Kind of yeah. Deal. Yeah, not not it for wheel independent steering, I guess on it. Um, no, just two valves. Each valve is connected to each side. Okay. Yeah. Um, do we miss anything with this thing? If we put this thing together, would this work? Yeah. I think so. I think we're onto something here. Okay. Um, so let's now. Um, what I would like to do now then is let's divide and conquer, and and who can. Uh, who can take these things? So some of these things are already outlined. For example, for the motors on page twelve, I'm going to move this up here. Actually, on page thirteen, I'm going to move this up here. So look at the motors. The second one. That's what we need. Did some calculations on it. And the calculations are on page right after that. Um, right there. Page four of the calculations. So that's, that explains what's going on there. Um, and that's the motor. So we, we got to draw it up. Let's, uh, let's do that. Who wants to take on the motor? Anyone can do a motor. Let's divvy up tasks. Um, for and for a first lesson in FreeCAD, uh, you can you can also learn FreeCAD if you can download FreeCAD 16. I'm telling you, you could possibly do it in an hour uh, with, with my brand new video from last year. Uh, so I'm going to put a link to that. It's under FreeCAD 101, and it's, it was in the email. FreeCAD 101, the video number three. Take a look at that workflow tutorial. Draw things in Sketcher, extrude them to 3D, and you can make as complicated things as you like, everything you need for this project that we're working on right now. Um, so, I put that link on page one, free CAD tutorial. Now, if anyone ever uses that tutorial, let me know if it's any useful of how we can make it better, because uh, I'm trying to do is that standard OSC workflow that's always used in how we work here. So FreeCAD tutorial. The idea is that if you can draw, like you can, you can make lines on a two-dimensional screen, 
and then you can extrude them and then you can make further shapes on each face you can get to infinite complexity in 3d CAD so uh, the success of a, of a mass collaboration and this would be if if a lot of people would learn how to do that and then we can turn ideas into real technical designs okay um, I want to do the frame because there's a trick to the frame cab frame so frame I think that we did that twice I think that's cab frame so I'm gonna put my name on that and if possible I'd like a sort of a recommendation for something that would be good Please. for a noob uh, something that's sort of traceable that would have a diagram available to trace and make 3D. If that is um, the motor, then that might work. A diagram, some, something that you trace out on a two-dimensional piece of paper and then make it into 3D? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's a good idea. I'm um, looking for possible cat. Sometimes you can find um, 2D exercise. dimension drawings of things like the motors. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. on. So I was trying to look for that, but sometimes it's really hard to find that, and all you have is like some dimensions on the product page. So you just end up kind of guessing, which is going to be an issue later. So I'm going to say with the CAD, it's good to try to draw it in parts that are realistic, like how the part or the component is put together itself. So like it's it's this component that's made up of all these other actual parts and it's good to just draw those and make it in the CAD the way it might actually be built or machined and manufactured because that actually also makes sense in the long term and it's just a convenient way to think about breaking stuff down to draw it in pieces okay yeah so uh, let's see if we could add some names to anything here I'm just going to seed those names on page number two. Jen, can you do something? On some dinner, that can I have some? That might be cereal. My guess is cereal. Mm -hmm. Um, we got Nathan. Nathan, uh, can you take one of these things on? Let's see. So, okay, on a motor, let's look at how much data we got on the motor. So we click on that, you go to surplus center, which is the source. So when you, whenever something has a blue frame around it, it means it's hyperlinked. That's the OSC convention, of course. Uh, if we go there, I would be looking for a diagram that's, typically they have parts, like maybe some diagrams. So let's see, do they have this? Questions. Um, warranty info. No, nothing as far as any kind of drawings. It just has a description, and then the best we have is the size. It sh the size there is that many inches. Um, so we got to kind of guess here. Um, 4.7, 4 and 7 eighths is twice, so that'll be, I'm going to guess that's the square face plate on the front so so go to free cat le legacy point one six and um, we can start with that um, four and seven eighths inch for the face plate that's gonna be like one inch thick if it's four point five three inches 
that I'm assuming is the distance to the back of the motor without the shaft because that's going to be more than four inches with the shaft. Um, but see, that's a that's unfortunately a guess until we buy the part and then we can take a look at it. Um, so if someone, yeah, I can just make like a. I'll, I'll take those for a rough picture and. Yeah. It can be modified. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Anthony, here's a working dock. There it is. Okay. Please, please go ahead with that. Start with that faceplate that's four and seven to eight inches, and uh, that's all we know. Sorry. Um, let's see. Anyone else? Oh, no. Hold on a second. So there's one more step you can do. Okay. Okay. Um, it says it's a 5.4 cubic inch white part number hydraulic motor in the part description. Take that, Google it, and see if you can pick out a technical oh, okay, from yeah, the internet. Neat. That's reverse engineering 101. So I'll paste that there it's white hydraulics see if see what happens when you google it because i can tell you on the tractor for example the micro track that we built once again the cad was a guess we guessed how the motor would look and we ended up having to do major reconstructive surgery we had to actually cut up the frame because the motor wouldn't fit and we had to redo so that kind of stuff is where, in an open source world, you would have all the CAD and FreeCAD already that we can just take it down. But once again, once once we're done with this project, then we do have that. So that's good. Um, okay. Katie, let me know if you find anything under that Google. Skid steers do have the grass ripping up problem, and that's where we're going to have to make the wheelbase narrow enough so so the shape of the frame is going to be 5 by 8 feet, and we, we'll need to make the wheelbase tight enough. Uh, I mean, wider as opposed to longer, so skid steering is easier, and it's not going to be as good as turning but for simplicity it's good and um, yeah okay and I'll continue with that so let's see other parts the engine we've got that we've got that in, in other part libraries so let's see where that engine is where's the best Engine would be probably under. We did this in Microtrack, okay? So Microtrack. Let's see if we can pull up that engine cat. We've already and and did the cat on that. Yeah, the I think there's an engine module separate on seven version seventeen ten maybe of the power cube and things like that or seventeen. Oh, okay. Probably even seventeen eleven. I think I I broke it down into different modules oh, cool. with. Without the um, the the coupler and the pump and so on, um, so th there's a lot of parts and subparts there. Uh, I you said you're going to take the frame, just that's going to determine a lot of the shape. And it sounds like you want to use slats for all that. Uh, I guess there's there's different maybe parts of the frame. I think before on some of the other tractor cabs and things like that we talked about using some lighter steel tubing yeah. is there anything like that that's cost effective you think for for this or you really, you want to go with all like slats and no uh, just the flats doing... like you're talking about okay okay what we want to do for for this is do six flats that are welded into a cube so so four by four steel make four sides out of that and when you weld six sides, sorry, mate, 
Four pieces of that plaid get you one side. Basically, the one edge of the plaid. Much, much, and show a picture of your 3D printer. It's just basically. Well, take a look at the power cube frame. That's, it's the same thing. The, the, okay, 3D printer. So, yeah. oh, you want the golf frame. cart to be very cube like, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Just, okay. The appropriate aspect ratio, yeah. Because okay. that has well, ROPS, rollover protection built into it. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, make it a cube. I mean, I'm looking at the other pictures of the golf carts, and you can see there, uh, there's a lot of tubing and light stuff like that. Some of it's round, but, you know, square, square tubing. But, yeah, either way, cut. Um, yeah, but that, yeah, that like, way, like, uh, you reduce some of the, the frame. Reasons, uh, power cube. Right. Um, do you want it, uh, you think you want to get it a little bit less cubic, maybe trapezoidal, yeah, stuff yeah. like that? Uh, less cubic as in, yeah. it's not going to be a cube, because that won't work. <laughs> It'll be yeah. a long yeah. cube, elongated cube kind of deal. Um, okay. but I'll take that, because I'm, I'll take that part. I'll okay. take the frame. Um, yeah. And how many seats, like, uh, you know, do you have a base idea? Are you thinking five by eight for this thing? Um, yeah. Or a little bigger? Five by, let's do five by ten. Five by eight, five by ten. And, okay. Um, there we have eight. Katarina, what do you so, want? Five by ten? No, let's do five by eight and see if everything fits to size. Fits as needed. Do you want, like, a... You're thinking like a single inch seat. Uh, look at the. Or, you just got so confused, didn't you? Sometimes there's front and back, the seats that are front and back. Hey, it's and already on slide 13. I just moved up the slide. Hold them on. Let's see, uh, slide number five. Look at that seat. That you might be a little better than that, but. A bench seat, I'd say. Just a bench, no back. Back, yeah, back. <laughs> Do okay. it better than that. Yeah. We'll 3D print it. Sure. Um, okay, Power Cube Genealogy has the engine somewhere. So I'm going to say that... Um, I think that yeah. there's one thing we forgot to talk about. What's that? Um, we said that we were going to make the roof a solar panel. So the yeah. panel itself is the roof. So that has the, the cab has to be able to accommodate that. Yeah. You can be able to mount one or two solar panels, whatever size they are on it. Yeah, but that's already addressed because uh, if it's a frame, you can put the panel on top of it. Right? Right. But it has to be right. Okay. And if it's five feet wide, those panels are... Okay, so let's look at the panel. Katarina, can you pull the panel off this, the CD Cajon, the open source PV system? Can you take that from there? Because that's the same panel that we have in a shop. We can use that. Probably a couple of those. Can you pull that and make a slide out of that? Okay. Okay, let me see if I can find it. I'll, I'm, it's on I'm the open source PV system page on the wiki, of course. Right. Oh, on the wiki. Okay. Yeah. Abe, hey, did I hear you volunteering about the seat? Yeah, I can take the seat. Well, Katie's got the motors. The motor. Katie, are you finding anything? Yeah, I found the, the diagram from the manufacturer. It's posted nice. in the chat. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is is make a new page in the work doc and paste it in there. Can you do that? Okay, yeah, Thank I you. can do that. Um, I am. While I was looking there, I see that they also offer hydraulic brakes. Is that something that we need separately, or does the hydraulic um, motor cover stopping well, the damn thing? It, it does, because if you use this hyd hydraulic valve, if you put it into neutral position, it locks it. Oh, cool. Thank you. That's the cylinder valve. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm also going to add a pressure relief valve uh, in here because we don't want to basically stop in place. We want to coast to a stop. So that's a pressure relief relief valve, which we don't have in a power cube right now. Oh, it doesn't work. Surprise. Um, surprise. Okay, we got the motors. Um, oh, who wants who wants surprise. that? En who's gonna pull that engine in? Into the okay. So the work is about organizing information. If we have everything on the part library on the wiki page, someone can take that and work from it readily. So I want somebody to, to volunteer for the engine, which means uh, someone can take that and copy that information with a picture on the open source golf cart wiki page part library. Sorry, could you say that again? I think you cut out. Okay. So we've got a working doc on a wiki. And we've got a part library on the wiki on open source golf cart wiki page. Um, we want to put the parts that we find, like ORCAD, up into the part library on the wiki so that it's a uniform repository of all the parts that people can download and put into new designs if they want to make new designs of this golf cart. Okay. Yeah. Should there sort of be just a separate area for links to separate working sheets or just the links to part information directly with headers for which part they apply to? I'm not, uh, say, I'm not understanding the question. Say it again. So should, I, so should each part have a link to its own work doc? Well, in are, work, mm -hmm. if you're asking about the work doc, the work doc is organized well by pages, so you can put a title on each page. Okay. Like, it's good because any piece of the puzzle here can use a lot of supporting information. So one page per, like even one page per part is eventually good. Because you, yeah. Okay. So now the open source golf cart page has got an index on it. Uh, click on three, which is the part library. And that's where the things go into. So once you got it, uh, click on that to get the free cat file. And, and you'd have to upload a picture in order for that picture to be, appear as a picture. Um, we should have a slide on part library, so I'm going to put a slide and, on the part library. An organization question on the part library, I guess, would be how do you want to link, I guess, to a lot of the parts are previous existing and they're already in other part libraries. So I guess the good question is how do we want to duplicate those? Uh, All just you link to, do to is them embed it or just embed it because it's already on a wiki. It takes no memory yeah. to do that. If it's already on a wiki, then you simply copy and paste from an existing part library, right? Does that make sense? And that way the picture and the file will be embedded into this part library. So the part libraries, the parts of the part libraries are portable between libraries. So I'm going to put a page on part libraries, how that works. Recording has stopped. Recording has stopped. Ooh. Uh, so... I guess the easy way to do that would be to say, go to the gallery and yeah. edit the gallery, and yeah. you can just copy the elements from the other galleries Recording is on. to yeah. the new gallery, and it'll show up just like it does on the other gallery. That's yeah. one way to do it, right. uh, besides just linking to the exactly. whole page. Exactly. You want to do it modular at the level of each part. So each part is considered as a unit. That's the key to... This is modular breakdown method. You break everything into the smallest piece that's used. Like even a single nut should be a part in the part library. It should because then you're not guessing what kind of part it is. And when you want to do something with it in the CAD, you already have it. You don't have to worry about what its specs are. Um, so that's the power of the part libraries, uh, which... We definitely want to emphasize. Okay. I 
I think we need a video on a part library so how that works. Because uh, we don't have one on that. Watch then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I can't find any link directly to the panels that we bought, only a link to Sunlight in general and a bunch of other resources, but no information as to exactly what we have. Why, clearly it's in the working document of the open source PV page. PV system page, right? PV, like, open source what see, page? Let's point to that. Um, Which one? Okay, go to wiki slash PV, capital P, capital V. And it's going to be the, <clears throat> the working document. Can you see my, my screen? Well, which okay, no, it's the initial work document. It's labeled working document. There's the one that's called initial. Let's see. There's the final, initial, initial. initial. Let's see. I think it's an initial. Yeah, um, it is an initial. So, um, yeah. It's on slide number 20, like 20. 20. Uh, the specs of it are on slide number uh 17 the initial working dot and doc on the open source pv system page uh let me send okay. the direct link to that so i'm pasting in the chat box the chat box is a direct link uh i'm looking at 17 and i don't see it i mean i see it on 20. oh model weight dimensions is that it Millimeters? Slide number 17. Yeah, yeah that's dimensions. what I'm looking at. Yeah. Dimensions will get you what we have to draw up. It's 1650 by 990. It's the one in millimeters? What, uh, 1650 by 990 by 28, the one in millimeters? Yeah. Okay. That's 1.65 meters, which is... In feet, that is uh, 5.4 feet, which means that will rest on top of the frame, which is 5 feet. So that's good. Right. Oh, okay. So here's the, the next slide, 18, has it in inches. So 65 inches by 39 inches. 5.5 by 3.3. Yeah. Yeah. So... Can you go into FreeCAD and draw CAD up the the panel? You can do it as a as no. a cube. Yeah, you can. No. Okay. Um. We'll give that to you for extra credit and a reward. Uh. Right. Okay, um, continuing. Okay, so we got the PV panel. So that's um, Katarina got the solar panel. Um, can you, Katarina, put the solar panel in the part library by putting a, uploading an image of that panel? Or like um, an image? Like you could even just okay, paste. Well, that's Okay, here, let me give you a picture. It's under, um... Uh... Okay, this is a good okay, picture. Okay, can you... How much is the part library? Yeah. Where? I, I don't... You have to listen. I, I'm not familiar with any of these processes. Yeah. So... Yeah. Okay, let me send... So, a li there's a link here in a chat box to the directly to the panel that we used. The idea of the part library is that on the wiki there's a function called gallery and in it you can put a bunch of images that lie side by side. Um, so let me on page number two. So example of a part library would be 
Oh, okay. very I see it. I see it now. Okay, thank you, Abe. Yeah, um, I just noticed on the wiki page there, it needs to be edited some more, I guess, and I think only one person can edit it that at the time, so uh, oh, it yeah. doesn't have a table of contents, actually, I was just noticing, and it, it would be more uh, probably readable if it had that. It already does. I don't Refresh. It does, oh, yeah. Did I? Oh, got it. Okay. So for the part library, we can like, since that's going to be like our main working part, we're gonna we can break it down into like, um, yeah, you can break it down into things like the the frame, frame and structure, and definitely break it into power like power cube section. Um, human use, human interface, human usability features. <laughs> like you might have a C, for example. <laughs> that would be, definitely be the seat and a key, uh, electric start. Uh, that would be the cab. Like cu cab cover, mm -hmm. uh, lights, the windshield, 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 no? <laughs> yeah, a uh, body, uh, which could be three D printed later, so we can superpose a body on it. Body panels. So we got to get that cubic meter printer running. Uh, right now we're looking. It looks like the three D printer is going to be as a workshop at Color University of Colorado Boulder in uh, June or July. I'm talking to them. Uh, the cargo area? The cargo, cargo area? Bay? Okay. Yeah. Cargo area. Okay, so we missed all these parts in, um, in our overall uh, modular breakdown. So maybe can you add a couple of these? Okay. No, we didn't, we didn't miss those. Okay, there's the cab cover. The windshield is part of the cab, no? No, no separate it. That's going to be a separate part. I'm really mm, trying to okay. break it down to the part of how we build this thing. So lights will be separate. Okay. Oh, lights, yeah. I got that. Hey, we could have a solar fan. That'll be very easy. Solar fan. 12 volt fan. You sure mm -hmm. you don't want heat from the power cube in the heat of the summer? Um, no, I think that's okay. <laughs> no, I guess if we're moving like, I mean, even at 13 miles per hour, that, that we probably don't need a fan. That's like that's that's a neat addition, I think. Again, a little yeah. beyond the the scope of the. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Part. <laughs> okay. Um, so the part library. Just to talk about the part library, the example is on page number two. It's a gallery function on a wiki. Click edit to see how it works. To see syntax, to see HTML. Um, yes, yeah, so you can copy like a whole thing from an existing part library. So for example, uh, power tractor construction set part library.
should have a page called Power Cube Part Library, right? Let's see. Is it? No, I just not. I just pasted the link. Oh yeah, there it is. Power Cube Library. Yeah. Okay. There. So the Power Cube Library has the engine in it. Let's rip the engine out by deleting things in the tree. That, oh, that's really good. Thanks, Abe. That's uh, actually that's pretty uh, comprehensive there. This is amazing. Okay. And in a few years, when we have like parts for everything, we're, we'll literally be able to fly on this. Um, that's good. Oh, there's that small power cube. How about we borrow that? See, I'd like to borrow that part. Um, I'm going to put that into the golf cart part library. So for, so, for example, if you hit refresh, look at what happened just now for the power cube thing. So that's actually, we can borrow that whole thing. That's just the engine with the pump. Um, and that we can use, use as the modular engine unit. And now... Um, We want to make a separate mother power cube, which we don't have. Mother power cube meaning the hydraulic reservoir and cooling part. Um, I think that small cube, it's assembled pretty well. Uh, yeah. Because the only thing you might need to be deleted from it is the uh, cooler. Yeah. That kind of thing. And uh, it could be smaller because of that, I guess. But it, it, it should be pretty pretty good to go other than that. Yeah, that's... Um... That's right. Um, and we want to put in like the completed power cube like you have there and then a separate parts like just the engine if you want to modify things. So I'm going to borrow the engine and frame from another place. <clears throat> Pretty soon we'll be able to cut and paste ourselves into full design. Uh, if we have enough of these parts. So in a part library you can put parts, assemblies, and finished big things. Tires are we gonna use? Uh, I say just regular, like car wheels, which are cheap and accessible, like sedan size. Um. Nathan, can you add the wheels to to this? Nathan, are you there? Nathan. I don't see Nathan anymore. 
What about John? Can you um, add the wheels? Me? I'm not seeing any on, the, on my screen, just faces. Um. Jen, can I get you to the tires, find ourselves wheels, like, or draw them up? Uh, like basically like 16 inch wheels and they're already you can start with the ones on <clears throat> part page six um i think the one pick up no that's probably too big pick up tire it's probably too big uh jen can you find us some or draw us some wheel pad like a cylinder but the bigger picture is put that into the part library that's a placeholder. Can I ask you to do that, Jen? How about my Chromebook? I don't, I can't do it. Chromebook? Hmm. Sorry! <laughs> yeah, I don't, Chromebook. I don't have my Linux, I don't have my Linux up, uh, machine up yet. Here, where I'm at. Hmm. Yeah. If you have a Chromebook you can still do that. Can you find a, uh, can you see if you can find a set of wheels on GrabCAD? A step file, which is a important. A step file on GrabCAD? Okay, I'll go see what I can find. Yeah. On this uh, seat or bench, uh, I'm kind of roughing it up, but I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if, uh, Maybe kind of a frame. It would be easier to actually use something uh, besides just metal after the metal frame. Maybe it would be easier to use like plywood and then put some kind of, you know, actual pat what kind of padding you want to stick on it for just some comfortability. Yeah. Uh, plywood. Plywood might make it easier to do that and just put plywood in a frame. Does that sound good? Yeah. That's the way to do it. Okay. Uh, okay, so, sorry to interrupt, uh, Martin, you know I already linked a couple of tire files on GrabCAD, they're on slide 6. Right. But I don't know like, if they have the right... Yeah, but now looking back at that, their truck, truck tires, that's too big. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. We need okay, something smaller. Thank you. All right. We can still keep them there for reference, but they're too big. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Trying to do the the solar panel. What do you mean? Um. Set up a placeholder for it in the part library. Oh yeah, I can do that. I mean, uh, are you gonna see, just put an image of it? Can yeah. Is the, is the page filled up? Can I can I edit? Of course. Okay. Let me show this. Well, well I'm sorry, not editing at the same time. Yeah, but someone will lose their edit. Um. Yeah, it's kind of. But but definitely nobody's editing right now. No, like I, I edited a few times, but okay. I didn't have any conflicts. 
Okay. Um. Okay, I think I'm gonna, let's see, um, Katie, am I seeing the, the motor? Are you looking for a stopped page that's empty? Just started creating it. I didn't. <clears throat> and oh, I have, I meant, I have it in the slide. Oh, I meant just in a, in a Google Doc. Oh, yeah. I posted uh, the link underneath the okay. one that you put on page five. Okay. Um, which I can make a separate page in the presentation. Yeah, I was yeah, doing please a do. Please work, do, that way. work page on that. Yeah, 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 please do. I'll do both. <clears throat> because for one, that's a full document. We got to, do you know which one it is? Yeah, you have to pick out the right one from there. Yeah, yeah, I, I found the right one. It's uh, page 10 of, I think it looks the same as the link that you nice. put on the presentation. I followed that to the manufacturer. They have a manual with specs for all of their motors of this. Yeah type um yeah and i found the right um series so i'm pretty confident that this is the right diagram very good let me screen cap it just so that we know that we have it and it's not just a link to a pdf yeah Thousand pound, yeah. Looking at that catalog, there it looks like the shaft of that motor can hold a thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great, yeah.
That's pretty good. Okay, so it's 2.17, we're an hour into it. We're gonna go till three, but let me just review the kind of the workflow. So what we've done so far is broken down the thing on page three into as many modules as we can do. And we're trying to translate those into meaningful dimensional CAD, which means technical drawings that we then take to our repo repository, which is gonna be the page on a wiki called open source golf cart which has the part library in it at this point i see three pictures of the power cube in there in the part library but the goal is to embed a picture and an actual cad file to substantiate that picture at the at the part library so if in the next 45 minutes maybe you can do like, even if you don't finish it, just seed it. So maybe upload the first version of the file. Like, for example, if you're working on a motor, you got that faceplate that you just drew out. out. Yeah, put that up there as um, MotorCAD. Um, things like that. So that we have a picture and a downloadable file. That means if you disappeared, somebody else could take exactly where you left off and that work is not bottlenecked in, on, uh, on your computer. So you get it up to the internet, then wherever you are, you can have somebody else work on it. An idea there is like, well, how do you know you don't get into conflict even if you have low coordination? Like say you uploaded the CAD and you say, well, what if somebody is gonna upload it and there's going to be an edit conflict because they did another version so what you do for that you just check if there's an upload like after yours when you start working on something just see if somebody did something yet and if so download that new version if not you're assuming that okay yours is the latest version and you're doing the latest work so that's kind of a rough way to think about it uh, but the idea of how do you control that kind of process with many pe many people gets complicated. Uh, they have this checkout system in professional CAD packages. We could, you know, at one point add that to FreeCAD. But at present, the simple idea of upload as soon as you have something is our working principle. So I'm going to work on a frame now. Um, Try to add the hydraulic motor to the part library. So I'm just going to back out, mind my own business. 
and try it again. Placeholder for the motor is there already. How tall is this thing going to be um, for the frame? We said 5 feet 7 inches minus the wheels. Um, I say about 4 feet.
Zero, zero, zero. Oh yeah.
kind of worked. But not really. I'd like to declare that I've got the first frame iteration up there. If you refresh the open source golf cart, I must admit it's most amazing, but it's also wrong. <laughs> so we're going to redo that. I uh, thought I had a cunning trick to do it, but I'm going to do it out of six individual sides. I try to do a solid and poke holes through that, but it ends up with beams, not angles. Take a look at that if you want, but okay, I'm gonna start from scratch here, I think. Um,
to keep everybody updated on what's going on, you can t put in a slide for your thing, what you're working on, uh, to show immediate results. Like, for example, look at this, this immediate result on the frame. That's the base of the frame. So you can kind of keep people up to speed where you're at, and that keeps the excitement. <laughs> really keeps the excitement level up. Um, moving on to the second side. So I need to make three things like that. Six of them will make a complete frame. But that shows the process. So it's actually useful to capture the process, how these things are built. Hey, can anybody hear me? Yeah. Oh, hey, um, so the screen sharing isn't actually working. Uh, do you have it turned off? No, it's, um, maybe it's bandwidth. I'm, okay. um, I'm sharing my screen. Do you want to share yours? Um, I haven't been able to figure out how to do that. I'll keep working on it. I think uh, maybe I'll try Chrome instead. What you got? What you gonna show us? Oh, I have nothing to show, really. I just wanted to get it working. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Whoa, we've got some exciting bench seat coming right up.
Holy cow, I've got the second side. Not messing around anymore.
okay we're getting close to the finish line here um, so I want to start wrapping it up if you guys take a look at my screen can can people see my screen we can't see your screen yeah well Okay, maybe bandwidth issues, but uh, if you go to the open source golf cart page, I put in a, my frame to the to the library, and it's we've got a three-sided frame right now, but where the three sides meet, there's an angle, the effective angle. So that's that's how it looks. Uh, I tried to upload the latest image. I see there I think there's a bug on this no there it is if you go to the history of the GC frame PNG it shows the latest yeah you should be able to see it is it does it consist of three sides if you refresh or does it consist of, of six sides you said open source golf cart page how do we find that it's three-sided so okay, it's three go sided. That's first it, yeah. to the um, open source golf cart page at the bottom yeah. in the frame structure. There's frame files, yep. GC frame. Yep. And before it had all six sides, but now it's only three. Yep. Like it Excellent. opens it in the back. That's good. So that's open source golf cart page on the wiki, just as it says. You can see it in the recent wiki changes, Jen. So, Jen, if you, yeah, the working pages on recent wiki changes. Uh, okay, so let's kind of review where we're at. So, um, going back to slide number four, got some progress. So, cab frame is one half done, actually. <laughs> got three sides of six. Um, and my product demo is right on slide number three. Uh, so there it is. I went from a single side to two sides to three sides. And it's actually useful to keep that there because an average sucker would take an uh, angle and try to weld a frame out of that. And I can guarantee you that this method, what I'm showing here, is self-aligning and it'll be much easier than starting from angle. And that's by learning uh, to do that with all the frames that we've done. But I've got three frames out of six. and. It's useful to kind of see the, the screenshots because you see how the process goes one by one, step by step. So now I just got to copy those parts to the other sides and that's a full frame. Uh, and that's up on the wiki at the part library. So if you go to the part library on the wiki, that is already there. So no, anybody can take that and take it from there. So now we made it accessible globally. Uh, can anybody else report on where they are? Did anyone, uh, Katie, did you do a block of that motor yet? or? I am working on the block. I'm having a little bit of trouble. I'm using the um, OpenCAD 1.6 on my Mac since I have available. Yeah. Uh, so the workflow is a little bit different. Um, I have uh, it to the dimensions of the schematic that I, well, so I have the schematic that I found and I have it as a layer and I can edit my model there, but it's being really stupid. Like I might, image is blocking anything that I create in draft mode. So I'll look at that. Well, upload it. Yeah. Upload it. Hey, as we finish up this meeting, can you try to yeah. upload it to the sure. GC wheel motor that and STD? Yeah, uh, I can definitely do that. Do that, and then, then no way we can collaborate. I see Abe has an absolutely epic bench seat. Absolutely epic. That's, that's all I got to say. Um, Hey, but I don't see that uploaded to the part library. Um, so, Abe? Hey, can you upload it to the part library? That would be great. Um, any comments on it?
Abe, we can't hear you if you in case you're trying to speak. But, um... Oh, okay. I had my mic muted wrong. Uh, I, yeah, I got it pretty well done, actually. I think I, I, I hope it's uh, it may need to be edited for size and, and the shape. I got an angle on the back a little bit. It, I just kind of made it with sketches and clones and parts yeah. and to do it quick. And uh, it, it should be pretty easy to change the arrangement and the size as necessary. I made it. Uh, well, a foot. I made it only four feet wide because I figured maybe uh, six inches on either side if the vehicle is five feet for uh, a step area. But then again, I guess you could put different step points on the vehicle to step in if necessary or something like that. Is that supposed so to it, be steel? Yes. I figured yeah. it's still four, four inch slats uh, uh, by a quarter inch. Uh, and that's probably actually pretty heavy, actually. I, I wouldn't sure if it use something lighter than quarter inch, but that's probably easiest, right? And yeah. Uh, maybe no, no, some like other... What happened to the wood version? Is that, you don't think we should do it? Well, wood? I figured we'll just put some, uh, I mean, it could be plywood, or just put, put plywood on the back, just bolt the pieces of plywood with, uh, if you want a comfortable, you know, seat with some foam on it, the easy way to put foam or whatever on is on wood, right? So you just, um, you know, there's different ways to do uh, upholstery for seats. Yeah. If that's, uh, you know, ideal. Because it, it's easier to, it's usually done on a piece of wood and, and that gets bolted to your frame. Okay. Now that, wherever there's a single layer without an angle, that's just going to, bend like the back and the front is going to completely bend and the sides are going to bend like just like butter yeah so we need to okay that, but well um, that it needs some support um yeah yeah if we're going to do metal okay. do a cube a six-sided cube then it will reinforce the bottom where it, wherever it's sitting on the bottom uh that's one way to do it uh if you want it like the simplest construction cube it not one one quarter by four. I would even go quarter by two. That's my suggestion. Okay, mm -hmm. two inch wide sides. Yeah. So yeah, steel bands like wherever you don't have it like the front piece of that. That's just gonna you're gonna sit on it. And it's gonna drop like four inches because steel is not strong in that way. It needs to be yeah. angled. I figure the bottom of this would just end up getting welded to the, the base plate frame um, so I figured that the bottom that way would be uh, permanently welded but I guess it could be bolted on to make it more modular so I would do uh, maybe some for this I would do a elongated cube and bolt it to the base if you want to go pretty simple um, and then it could be like you can put plywood on the inside of that and that would be a, a box seat you know hmm. I was trying to leave space uh, underneath, like I didn't necessarily want to make like a single sheet. We have to cut out a hole for like the front of the sides because I figured you want that under seat space for storage and things yeah. like that. It's easier to fit things under. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I see Katie just uploaded this. I'm just going to check it out see what we've got here. Just there in there. Basic sketch? Do we have one? Whoa, that's great. Um, so you got a thing on a, yeah, I mean, that's cool. So let's see, do you have any sketches there or? There's a rectangle behind it. Oh, yes. There we go. There you go. So this is cool. Like, here, what you can do right there, so if you go into Sketcher, um, you can start tracing right on top of that, and that's the cool part about how Sketcher yeah. works. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that, like, right now. Oh, man, that's great. Now... Do you know why I can't see what I'm tracing? Like, why is it behind this image? I, can't I don't know. I the... tried XY plane, and it's working for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, 
So that is really cool. Now, if that is at the scale, so let, let me see if I can, has anyone seen, seen my screen before or? Uh, I'm, I'm seeing your video right now, so there's enough bandwidth probably, okay. so if you show your screen. Okay, can you see this? Can you see my screen now? Yes. Excellent. Yes, so see, see I'm tracing that, and this is perfect. That's, that's exactly what you do uh, for reverse engineering, except this one yeah. point. we got to maybe move that back in. Um, and then I can just take circles, and I can put those volt patterns in there. Uh, now, I don't know what scale this is in terms uh, of the actual picture that was pasted into the FreeCAD, but if it were to scale, then the, then the reverse engineering of it would be BAM. You, you reverse engineer it right off technical drawings that you find online, which is very useful. So here I'm going to go to close that sketch, selecting that sketch, extrude it out. And um, extrude that out to one inch. Look at that. Yeah, I um, I hung myself up. That somebody answered the question. That's millimeters is the number and um, inches in square brackets. Yeah, cool. Um, Neat. It's extruded. Look at that. We just extruded something. A little bit of reverse engineering 101 right here. Now let's see, like, if I do the measurement, like, what what is the actual scale I'm at here? So I'm measuring that, and it's showing me 3.58 inches. That's close, because uh, that that should be 4.85. So let's see, can we? That's an interesting question. Can we scale this picture right. in the back to be actual correct scale? It's often easier to constrain. Uh, I think or sometimes it's easier to constrain if you do it as you make it. So if when you start with a square, you constrain that, and then you add your arcs and other details and just keep constraining each piece as you make it. Uh, as it gets more complex, a lot of times it's harder to constrain. I would say that's usually the case. Yeah, that doesn't address the scale issue. How do we address the scale issue? The scale, see, for the th thickness? No, for the actual size. Uh, it's 4.85 in the real dimension, and my measurement, it says 3.58 inches. Oh, well, the measurement, let's see, which tool that used the, um, yeah, okay, so that ruler tool. That ruler yeah. tool tends to be inaccurate, depending on the position. If you use the tape, uh, what is it, the part bench tape rule, it will give you the exact dimensions of whatever the sketch part is. Where's the is, it, is it possible to scale the image first if we're going to use yeah. this tracing? Yeah, workflow? I would do that. I would do that. I would the find, first of all, the scale. How do you scale the image? That's a good question. I don't usually oh, use do... the, the trace, and I, I like that, though. I, I don't, uh, I usually haven't done it that way. We should document this. So what we should do, I would yeah. su suggest that the method is we take the measurement of the reverse engineering and generate a scale factor for the, in the, for the you put, what is that, like a PNG or a JPEG? Yeah, it's a JPEG. So you got a JPEG, then you go into a thing like, what would you do? Uh, oh, like, yeah. Again? Like preview or whatever and scale it by a specific percentage. Yeah, so if you, well, if you go to GIMP, um, does GIMP allow you to scale an image? Yeah, I think so, right? So we have to figure out how... A lot of tools let you scale... Effectively? I think GIMP is pretty accurate for yeah. that, because it lets you scale so many pixels and inches. Um, so also, see. I would think that FreeCAD would have somewhere an option for that, you know, because it's You a do. I mean, we have... Tool. There's a scale tool within FreeCAD, but... I haven't figured out how to use that well yet. Um, yes, it's it should be pretty easy, but I'm not sure. Image, so I would rather be, like, since the yeah. scaling process is a little more complicated, I think it might be easier to draw it to the correct size, potentially, like by just scaling the sheet of paper that we're drawing from. 
Um, yeah. So I'll probably say, okay, let's put that into GIMP. Uh, so that's good learnings. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do a copy. Katie, would you mind uploading your screenshot, the JPEG, as well? So oh, we yeah, can, absolutely. Yeah. So someone else could do that. You don't get to that. Um, <clears throat> sort of uh, logistically, if, if I upload that, I have a link at the bottom of the open source golf cart page that is for the 5.4 CU hydraulic motor stock part. Uh -huh. um, so I can, but I don't know if like we're just keeping it like as part of the um, part li library of the golf cart page itself. Well, I was, yeah, you can put all kinds of supporting files down there. The okay. idea would be for somebody to replicate your free CAD file, like I don't know how to extract that like, for example, if I wanted to scale that image, I can't get right. it out of FreeCAD, or I don't know how to do that. Um, so if you give the source image as a supporting file, then I can recreate what you have done and scale that so we can actually get it to the right Okay, I'll put, I'll put it on that page then. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just make a note here that... Uh, so, yeah, reverse engineering 101... I'm gonna let's see. So I'm gonna put that next to uh, Part libraries, or just duplicate the page, slide, duplicate, slide. So reverse engineering. To reverse engineer. Uh, paste in a tech drawing. Find out its scale. Scale it in GIMP to correct scale. Re reinsert into FreeCAD. and reverse engineer from it. Like below. Scale be below is off. Is off. 3.6 inch versus 4.85 inches for the actual yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Um, so here we go. Um, that's good stuff. Anyone else <clears throat> got any li part library additions? Let's see. So I see uh, we've got the hydraulic motor free CAD. We've got the frame up there and three more but so whoever if you did start anything please put that up into the part library uh, that we can throw out um, let's see who else a seat Katrina did Katrina is still there did, did you get the solar panel into the library or no, Katarina dropped off. No, she, she's still there. Um, yeah, Katarina, do you have one or not really? Okay, 
So in any case, we've got some progress on, on this beautiful design. On the open source golf cart, it requires a little bit more work on getting the other parts in there. We got a, a little bit. Um, so the next steps are what? Keep working on a cat for, for anyone who's who started it and keep populating the part library with actual CAD files and to be continued is the is the word let's see how do we leave this party with a bang so we will um, let's see what are our next steps on this that would be a good question Next steps are to continue integrating the design with the frame and everything else. So continue working on individual CAD files and uh, finding other CAD files online and putting them into an overall assembly. So once we have the individual parts, we can put them into an overall assembly. And it would help so if we had many more people to, to do this and an orientation about how the process works here. We could get a lot of this thing done in a pretty decent time, but missing link right now is having more people. Okay, so to wrap up, we'll, we'll continue working on this uh, as far as the individual CAD files and keep uploading things to the wiki uh, and report on this on the social media. and. I guess for the people on the dev team, so we'll see you on Tuesday again. And Katie and others, thank you for participating. Any questions or like, can you, Katie, maybe um, follow up with doing that workflow that we discussed? Would you have some time to do that? Um, the workflow of, of scaling scale that. Image. Yeah, scale that and get it to the right scale so that it appears sure. at actually the correct dimensions and then actually you know, if you draw that faceplate, that'll be a good start with the correct dimensions. Um, okay. Yeah, we can do that. That'll be great. And then we can learn from you as far as did that process work with GIMP. Okay. Um, yeah, sounds good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so we'll continue working on this. And thanks, everybody, for participating. And... Um, Let's see, as far as, I, I'd say let's continue working on this for like a couple of weeks. I would say let's let's hold another uh, small design sprint like this in a couple of weeks to see where we are. If we pulled in all the files and hopefully we get towards a finished design in like a couple of weeks. So um, we'll, we can begin building that. All right, uh, so so let's plan on about two weeks from now having another another session like this on Friday. And otherwise, we'll see you all at the, at the dev meeting. Thanks a lot, everyone.